Let's face it, filming a wedding can be really stressful. There's so many things that you have to worry about and there's a lot of things going on in your brain. You have to worry about camera gear. You have to worry about giving the bride and groom a, a great experience. Are you gonna have beautiful cinematic shots that are gonna enhance your portfolio? Audio, lighting, worrying about paying someone else to help you out. But what if you didn't have to pay someone? What if I told you that you could film a wedding entirely by yourself? In today's video, I'm gonna share with you seven tips on how you can effectively film any wedding all by yourself. Tip number one, that is going to be pre-production. And I feel like this is a given because what do they do in Hollywood before every or any movie is even created? They plan, they plan, they write down notes, they strategize, they are building a structure for this film that they are creating. And really wedding films should be no different. Going into every single wedding with a plan and a structure is not only going to massively improve your production and your quality, but it's also going to give you so much more freedom and less stress on a wedding day. If you go in and you don't really know how you're going to shoot this or what lens selection you're going to use or what cameras you're going to use or you're just constantly worried about how you are going to effectively serve your clients, I can tell you that is just no way to A, live your life and B, run your business. If you've just been winging it for the past three years, maybe it's time that you sit down, develop a structure and find something that works for you. The bride and groom, they could be running behind, the dad could preemptively get up in front of everybody and say a very heartfelt speech without you even knowing it. Things happen, but having that structure, having that game plan, being on the same page with all of your vendors, that is going to be huge for you. Things that you want to be planning before a wedding include building a timeline, strategizing with the photographer and the planner, getting to know them and how they operate on a wedding day is such a great way to build just rapport in general and also build new relationships in this industry. Because being in the service-based industry, it's not just about servicing your bride and groom, it's also just being an awesome person that other people want to work with. Spend time getting to know your couple, sit down and design a shot list, and uh, look at other photographers and videographers in your area that are doing things that you, you like and have a similar look that you want to achieve and really just take the time to get into that mindset so that when the big day does finally come, you have a solid idea and foundation on how you are going to film this event. You also wanna be sending out questionnaires to your couples so that way you have all of the information beforehand. You know what's gonna be happening. You know if they're planning on doing letters, are they gonna have gifts? Are they going to be doing a first look or first touch? Or are they gonna be doing something really crazy during the ceremony exit? Or are they gonna be having a really fun surprise dance during the reception? All of these things are really beneficial for you, the videographer, to know so that you aren't surprised when these things do happen. Communication is going to be the golden rule for most of these tips. As long as you're communicating what you need from the photographer and the planner, day of nine times out of 10, you're gonna be just fine and able to get all the shots that you need by yourself. Tip number two, probably one of my favorites, don't overthink it, which is something that I do every single wedding, even though I do have a structure, but you know, do as I say, not as I do type of thing. So yeah, don't overthink it. And what this means is, so being by yourself, it kind of forces you to think creatively for every moment on a wedding day which is honestly a good thing because that's just gonna help your end result that much better. I love authentic moments and just capturing the day as it is. I really don't prefer to redo shots at a wedding unless I necessarily have to, like something happened that was beyond my control. Then of course I might set something up, but personally I think you can definitely achieve uh, the look you're going for by yourself if you just plan ahead and don't overthink your shots. Having a tripod as your safety angle, and then you on the right and left side just kind of floating back and forth with a camera that is able to do handheld very well, like the Canon R6 or the Panasonic GH5. These are gonna allow you to make it seem like there are multiple people on the day, especially for a first look. Focus on the couple, the words being expressed. Stop worrying about if you packed enough camera gear or if your camera's not shooting in 60 or 24 or which frame rate should I shoot in this given moment. Just focus on what is happening in front of you. Most times what you capture for the couple, they're going to love because this is their day. So as long as you are focusing on client experience and servicing them in the best light possible, they're gonna love it. I mean, they hired you for a reason, right? Tip number three, stay minimal. 
I can't stress this enough. I mean, having all this equipment on a wedding day is stressful enough, even with a second shooter, but stay minimal with your gear. Pack one to two cameras, two tripods, just really two of everything. Two lenses, two recorders, a field recorder if necessary. Pack light and take the essentials. And ask yourself with every gear that you put in your bag, do I really need this? Is this gonna help enhance my story? Is this going to give me peace of mind on the wedding day or is it just gonna create more stress? If it's gonna create more stress, don't pack it, leave it out. If it's gonna allow you to tell your story in, in a better way, then absolutely bring it. But in my opinion, staying minimal, taking the bare essentials, knowing what your client needs is going to be really the only thing that matters. The wedding that I am showing you guys right now is one that I shot entirely by myself. I used the Canon R6 for really the majority of the day, with the exception of using the C100s for the ceremony and for really valuable moments like the first dance, uh, speeches, things like that is, is gonna be essential to have at least one tripod with another camera just locked down so that way you are able to focus on other moments that are happening around you and you know, hey, I'm safe here, I have this camera focusing on this, I can take my time and efforts elsewhere. So honestly, I just wanna encourage you to, you know, maybe for the next wedding, just see what you can get away with. I mean, maybe bring all your equipment anyway, but really just take a camera bag, put one camera, two lenses, two audio recorders, and just see what happens with that for the majority of the day. It's such a freeing feeling because I don't know about you, but I've always envied photographers who literally just, you know, they have the whole fast with two camera bodies and that's it, right? They don't have like Pelican cases. They don't have all these different things that they have to haul at every wedding. I'm super jealous of that. And so why can't videographers do the same thing? Especially nowadays with being able to go handheld, it's just, it's a no brainer. So I definitely wanna encourage you just to try to stay minimal for your next wedding and just see what happens. Tip number four is going to be keep communicating. The communication really doesn't stop even after the pre-production phase. This lasts all the way up until even after you deliver your wedding films. Communication is not only just the foundation of your business, it's just what's gonna really separate you from other people as well. Having great communication, not only for your couples, but also for your vendors, and other people you were working with is just going to put you in such a great light with them and really on their good side. You want to be on their good side. You want to have referrals coming from uh, other wedding professionals and the industry itself. So communicating is just a great way to not only get your point across, but also help you with your end product because ultimately what matters is the client's experience. Being a good communicator on the day not only helps your filmmaking process, but it also helps the photographer and the wedding planner's process as well. And it shows them you're professional and someone that they can consider working with at other events in the future. Tip number five goes along with communicating. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Getting on good terms with the vendors of the day and not being scared to ask them for things that you may need. This is honestly just gonna give you peace of mind and allow you to continue to serve your clients in the best way possible. Whether that is asking the DJ for just five more minutes so you can get everyone mic'd up before their speeches, or even asking the photographer if you can jump in for just 30 seconds while they have this pose set up because it looks gorgeous. Honestly, don't be afraid to ask for the things that you need, especially when you are filming by yourself. This is going to be huge so that you aren't stressed when you get back in the editing room. You know that, hey, I, I asked for all these things and you know, they help me out, I help them out, so my end result is just gonna be that much better. Tip number six is going to be a fun one and that is really building the edit as you go. Thinking of the shots that you need in your head and kind of building that out, and this is huge especially for, for wedding videographers who offer same day edits or next day edits with like teasers and things like that. Having a plan in your mind like, okay, great, I've already gotten four, four shots of her getting ready that were really beautiful. Uh, I have two shots of the first look. The audio was great there. Um, I have all my ceremony angles. I have the bride coming in. I have the groom reaction. It was really emotional. That was great. That's definitely going to go in the teaser. Having some awesome portraits. Thinking in your head, okay, great. I have uh, two different poses with about four to five shots of each. So I have a lot to work with there. And really just thinking in terms of everything that you've checked off. So have a mental check in your head, like, okay, great, I've got portraits, I've done the first look, I've done ceremony, I've done family photos, I've gotten some cocktail hour shots, 
having that mental checklist in your mind and just marking those things off as you go is definitely a huge help. Being a solo shooter on a wedding day, I know it is tempting to want to overshoot and uh, get more than you need, but I promise you if you follow the structure that you have created for yourself and you know exactly what you need, being able to be minimal in your shot selection is also going to be key when it comes to really the edit because you don't want to be super stressed out with all this material that you don't know how to really put forth into a beautiful film. So, so building the edit as you go with that four shot standard is definitely going to be really helpful. And then the last and final tip really is something that we probably forget to do because we're so focused on everything else and that's just to have fun. I mean, filming weddings is a fun job. I mean, you are literally being creative for a living. You're doing something that is very fulfilling, very impactful. So have fun with that. Like build relationships with other vendors, uh, build relationships with your couple and get creative, joke around with the couple, make them feel loved and honestly just enjoy the process because it is fun, it is fulfilling and it is something that is just unheard of when it comes to careers nowadays. So yeah, enjoy it and forget all the stress and the technicalities of everything. So often it's so easy to get caught up in the process that we really just forget to enjoy it. So yeah, tip number seven, have fun. All right guys, that is the end of this week's video. Uh, I hope that you found this video valuable and helpful in some way. Uh, if you're struggling with anything, I am offering mentorships and I would love to help you out and hear what you're struggling with. You can find our email down below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you have any questions in the meantime, leave those in the comments. And if you like today's video, be sure to hit that like button and I'd hope you consider subscribing. So until next time, keep creating and telling beautiful stories. Peace. Peace.